Um, well, it's great to have Jeff here. Um, and by the way, the last name rhymes with Hooker. Right. A true thing. It's that's how that's how it's pronounced <laughs> the name. So, um, no controversy there. Um, Jeff, we're delighted to have you here. Thank you for you having me. To, um, you're welcome. I think you wanted to tell the people a little bit that you're a little under the weather. Though, I am. Start. Just so everybody knows, uh, I'm actually dealing with a case of Bell's palsy on uh, on the left side of my face. It's about my seventh week. I'm totally fine. It will go away. But as a result, my speech is a little slurred. So I apologize for that. And uh, but it's all, I'm all good. It will be fine in time. But uh, we're just dealing with that as I as as we sit here. And uh, if you, anyone tells any jokes, he may not laugh. Right, as a result, I can't laugh, so I know Andy's gonna be really right. funny, but I won't right. be able to laugh at those jokes, so you guys will have to laugh at The reason at why he's not laughing at Andy's, because exactly. Andy usually isn't funny, but we'll get to that anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Jeff, of course, is the president of CNN Worldwide, started January 1st, basically, this year, and before that, of course, was the CEO of NBC Universal, a long-standing uh, television veteran, Used to be a wunderkind. <laughs> That's a long time ago. That was a, a lot long older time now. ago, but yeah, now when you when you get sort of towards the half century mark, you kind of lose that a little bit. Thanks. Anyway, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> see, he laughed. I can't uh, laugh. Yeah, I can't <laughs> laugh because it's not funny. Anyway, so being the head of CNN is you know an amazing job, high profile job, a challenging job. Um, you are right in the spotlight, um, and I, I guess the first thing to ask you is. You know, what are you trying to do? And what is, what is the strategy? And does it matter if someone like me gets the, the strategy, or is it just building viewers? Well, I mean, you know, I'd like you to understand a little bit of the strategy, but we also want those viewers. Um, look, I think the, the strategy, uh, see, look, CNN remains one of the great brands in news and information in the world. And, um, uh, and the key, I think, is to make sure that CNN is essential to as many people as possible, both here in the United States and around the world. And that's how we succeed, is by being essential. Now, the key, uh, CNN has usually been essential in times of breaking news, uh, and, and people would, would use CNN, and you know, a little bit like the spare tire in the trunk. You would take it out when you needed it, and then you know, put it back. The key for us and the goal and the strategy is to make sure that we are more essential more of the time. And so that actually you're using that tire on the car all the time. And that's really been the goal for us this year is to, uh, is to build programming uh, with uh, hosts and anchors that will bring people back on a more regular basis. We actually have, are in the middle of a very good year. We're having, uh, uh, we're having much more success than, than we had had before. And uh, we got a long way to go. Uh, but the strategy is to be more essential more of the time and to have you come to us not just when the royal baby is born. Right. But it's interesting. I mean, wouldn't your predecessor have said the same thing? We want CNN to be urgent. We yeah. want CNN, people to watch CNN all the time. We want it to be well, of course, of not course. just appointment viewing. Yeah, and then I think it's, it's you know, how you get there. Then it's, then it's execution, right? And, um, and look, I think one of the things that we've talked about in, in our new strategy is uh, broadening the definition of what news is, okay. and uh, and not being above not being above what people are talking about or what people are, are interested in, I think you know it became a, you know the, when I came in one of the one of the slogans at CNN was that CNN equals politics, mm -hmm. and uh, and I said uh, I put a a line through that and said that CNN does not equal politics. Obviously, politics is a huge part of what we do and, and will continue to be, but, but really that has to be that CNN is greater than politics. And you know, we have two, two domestic cable network competitors who are basically about politics all the time. What I want CNN to be about is, is all of the news. And all of the news is not just what's happening in Washington right. or, or in the Middle East, but it's also about entertainment and business and sports and culture. And, and, and things you know, that we all talk about, uh, but not just equals politics. All right, see, I get that. And you know, I, I, that's sort of, I didn't realize that, that, that. I mean, obviously, Fox, MSNBC, so consumed. I didn't realize that to the extent that CNN was. But of course, it was trying to chase that. And, and it seems really um, like something would pan out, because you have so many people so passionate about it. But it's really very narrowly. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, think that, I think that there are. As I said, if you have your two right. main competitors doing politics all the time and doing a good job at it in, in their right. respective places, 
Uh, I mean, I have nothing but respect for what both places are doing. But they're playing from you know the 20 yard lines in and right. talking to the people uh, who, who are passionate about their points of view. That leaves a lot of lot of room in the middle of the playing field where I think we can we can win. Now, of course, you get it both ways though. When you when you don't have any ratings and then you know your your ratings, you're building up your ratings, but you're going after. Um, other kinds of news, the same critics go, oh, you're going soft, you're covering the cruise ship, um, you're doing soft news, it's, it's junk, you're dumbing down CNN. Yeah, well, I, I, about that? I, well I, I, I disagree with that. First of all, we're still covering all that other news, okay? We're, you know, we're still all over what's going on in Washington, and we're still all over what's going on in Egypt. But that doesn't mean that you can't uh, cover stories of great human interest. Mm -hmm. You know, CNN, one of, the, one of the most important stories in the history of CNN was a little girl in a well in Texas and her, her recovery uh, and, and well-being. You know, th there have been a lot of people who have talked about our coverage of the, of the cruise line in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, most of it came from our competitors who were jealous that we had the foresight to figure out how to be out in the Gulf of Mexico to cover that. I have said many times that if 3,000 people were trapped in, a, in an office building in Chicago without any electricity, running water, or food, and couldn't get out. Every television station and network and magazine and newspaper would be covering that story nonstop. Just because they were on a cruise ship in the Gulf of Mexico doesn't make it any less interesting or important. And the fact that we had the foresight to, to be able to cover it brought some criticism, mostly from our competitors, yeah. And the fact is, the audience was quite interested in it. And I think that's a, a part of not being above, not be, you know, listen, we're still going to cover uh, what's going on in Washington, and we're still going to cover what's going on in the Middle East, but we're not going to be above also covering that human interest story in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, same thing with Trayvon Martin. I mean, you guys own that story. Again, you know, the critics are like, oh, you know, they went overboard. Now, and I think it's fair to say at some point, well, I would say what's interesting about that is there's actually been no criticism of it since the verdict happened and everybody recognized all the, all the layers to that story. Some of the criticism came beforehand. And, you know, again, I think that we did uh, recognize early on that this was much more than just a, a, a local uh, murder trial, that there were issues of race and class and uh, the Second Amendment and self-defense. And there were a lot of layers to this story. And I think that we, we realized that uh, maybe before others did. And then they became, you know, so, some people wanted to criticize that. Then once the verdict comes down and it becomes uh, an even bigger story, and you have the president of the United States issuing a statement, and then coming into the White House press briefing room and making an even larger statement, there's actually been no criticism since, since the verdict came down. And that's because I think people recognized, oh, maybe they were right. And so, you know, that's okay. You know, if, if we got there first, then, then the benefits go to us. Right. Um, I want to, um, well, we'll come back to some of the news in a minute, but I want to talk about digital and platforms, and obviously that's near and dear to everyone's heart here in this room, and, and near and dear to your heart, yeah. I think, as well. Well, look, I, I think that's the whole future of CNN, to be, to be honest with you. I mean, to us, uh, it doesn't matter uh, where people access CNN. You know, if you go back to the Boston bombings, more people learned about what happened in Boston from CNN than any other source in the world. Uh, and that's because they watched it on CNN. They watched it on CNN International around the world. And they accessed it uh, through CNN.com or CNN Mobile uh, or any of our digital assets. And, uh, and I think that really is the future of CNN, is we're, we're not going to care if it's uh, what screen you're watching CNN on. As long as you know there's a CNN red logo on whatever whatever asset uh, you're you're accessing, and to us, mobile is probably the most important part of our future. Mm -hmm. But digital as a whole uh, is where we're concentrating everything. We are we are integrating uh, digital and our news gathering efforts to make it one uh, as it should be. You know, I mean, these organizations grew up separately, and there was CNN. The, the you know you, you you obviously have been through this as well. You know, we, we, digi it's going to be digital first for CNN going forward, and that, that, is, that is as important a part of our strategy as anything. Right. I mean, one way of looking at it, of course, is you have your CNN television feed that you can sort of put on all the platforms, right? And then the other one, it, well, there's a, what, a million ways to look at it, but let me just follow this one. So you've got that, 
Endeavor, right? Sure. Just watching CNN yeah, on Yeah, I, I watched on CNN on my iPad yesterday. Right. Okay. And then also, but it's also creating actual new content to go on those platforms, right? Are you and you're doing both of those? We're, we're doing both. I think you have to do both. I think right. we live in a world where you have to you have to do both, and that that's really uh, where we are. You know, you look at what happened yesterday with the news of the royal baby, and right. again, you know, we can. We can, you know, argue all day long is how important that story is or whatever. But the fact is, uh, on our did you guys get the name of the baby by the well, way? Well, we I don't have it. That. We don't have it yet. But, they don't. Um, they, no one really has that yet. Well, I think there's probably two people who know it, but they haven't told anybody. Um, <laughs> Sam, and um, I, that's uh, funny. they're keeping it private. Okay, exactly. go ahead. no, but but we yeah. look at what happened yesterday, yeah. and you know, I just got the. Uh, I just got the digital numbers, um, and they were extraordinary. We had, uh, we had more than 12 million unique uh, visitors uh, to CNN.com yesterday. We had more than 85 million page views. Uh, we had more than 5 million video starts. And every one of those numbers is you know, up some 40% over the same day a year ago. Now, obviously, huge story, but what it shows is that people are coming to CNN, mm -hmm. and you know, now our TV numbers were quite good yesterday. I don't have the, the, the final numbers. We know that our, our early TV numbers were quite good, but it's, it's more people learned about the royal baby and, and followed the royal baby story through all of our digital assets than, than we'll ever watch television yesterday, and that's okay, that, that, and that's our future, and we are, you know, I mean, there's a lot of focus on what the ratings are on television. And look, that's a, that's a better story for us than it has been. So, you know, when, when people used to write the word CNN, they would put ratings challenged before it. That, that, that's, that's no longer the case. I mean, you know, listen, again, we've got a long way to go, but, but that's not really the narrative anymore. Uh, but the truth is, digital and, and, and people consuming their news and information from all of our digital assets, that, that's that's the most important thing for us. But to the extent that you're creating other content that go on digital we, platforms, we are videos and we are we're hiring. Stuff. Listen, the, right. two of the last uh, hires um, that we've made for correspondence were for digital. Okay, mm -hmm. you know now will they show up on television? Right. Yeah, they'll show up on television from time to time. But we hire those correspondents as digital correspondents, but and we're going to do more of that. But won't that digital content? cannibalize your television? No, I, 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 first of all, uh, you know, if people, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. So if people are going to access all of this content, you know, digitally, um, then as long as it says CNN on it, I'm okay. And so if there's going to be a cannibalization, I'd rather it be with CNN. But I don't really buy into that premise anyway. Uh, um, the fact is, you know, look at the younger audience, 18 to 34 year olds, mm -hmm. okay? Most 18, 34 year olds probably know of CNN from our digital products, right. okay? But we also know that when, when news happens, uh, those same people do come to watch us on television. Again, back to Boston, in all of television that night, in all of television, uh, CNN was the number two television network, not cable, in all of television, number two among 18 to 34 year olds that night, and we only lost by 2,000 viewers. We would have been number one. So 18 to 34 year olds may, may you know, principally know us from our digital products, uh, mm -hmm. but, but they will find their way to us on television, and that's actually very important to us as we look at the next five, 10, 15 years. Let me ask you about um, some competitors um, out there. Um, Al Jazeera America. Yeah. Um, it sounds like they're looking to do something kind of similar to CNN. Um, do you take it seriously? Oh, uh, totally, I mean, listen, you have to take all your competitors seriously. I remember vividly, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was uh, at NBC Universal and CNBC was one of the crown jewels uh, within the company, and Fox announced that they were going to launch the Fox Business Network, and everybody wrote, "Oh, this is going to be trouble for CNBC," or "This is the end for CNBC because Fox, you know, and they know how to do it." And here we are, you know. And, and so we set up a massive war room, and we were, you know, we took it very seriously. And here we are 10 years later, and, you know, I think CNBC is, is, is doing just fine compared to, to Fox Business. Um, so do, you have I, a war room? do you have a war room against Al Jazeera? So we don't have a war room, but, yeah. but we are taking it very seriously. You know, and I think, you, you know, you have to take all your competition mm -hmm. seriously, and I think you, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you make a huge mistake if you don't. Um, 
Now, look, I think the key is not to let somebody else take you out of your game, mm -hmm. right? And not to react to other people and what they're doing. And, uh, and stick to your own knitting. So we take them seriously, uh, like we take all our competition seriously, but we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and, uh, and keep moving forward with the strategy that I outlined with you. Um, listen, they have deep pockets, they have a lot of money, they, they, they're, they're hiring a lot of people, that's good for the business, more competition should make everybody better, um, and, uh, and we'll keep doing what we're gonna do. All right, how would you fix the Today Show? <laughs> um, <well laughs> yeah. That's funny. Um, <laughs> I can't laugh. Um, no, look, I mean, listen, uh, um, the Today Show, um, I think the key to all of those programs, and we had a tremendous amount of success for many years, is obviously uh, uh, the chemistry uh, between the, the people who are, are on the show. Um, and I think that, you know, I think that that's, uh, uh, that's what makes or breaks those shows. I think the Today Show obviously has had a difficult, you know, year and a half, uh, brought on a lot of it itself, and, and you know, those are the worst kind of mistakes. Um, but I think you have to look at, uh, you have to have folks who people want to watch day in and day out, and I'd probably start by taking a look at, at that, and, and that's where you have to start. It's not... It's not about tinkering with the, the, the rundown or, or you know, which story you do first or second. Those shows are about, are there people you want to watch? And that's where, where I think I would start. So we talked about this a little bit, Jeff. How do you do that? I mean, you get these, you know, you have this talent that's brought to you, that their agents are pushing you, they have friends, they're attractive, they've got track records, they look pretty good, this person looks good with that person, you put them there and watch them in a dark room. I mean. How do, you, how do you make those calls? Well, I mean, listen, a lot of this, a lot of this is, uh, you know, your own judgment, your gut. We just did it at CNN with our new morning show uh, where we launched five weeks ago. Uh, and we, we, did, uh, we did a number of screen tests, to be honest with you. And then at the end of the day, you go with your gut and, and what, you, what you think. When I was at the Today Show, I, we were incredibly fortunate. You know, two of the best people ever to do morning television maybe the two best ever do morning television, walked in our doors uh, within a year of themselves, w within a year of each other, Katie Couric and Matt Lauer. And, you know, right. and, and we put them together and we knew we had something very special. And, uh, and then, you know, we were very fortunate when Katie left to, to find Meredith Vieira. And, um, and, you know, some of it is knowing who's talented and some of it is knowing in your own gut what you think uh, will work. But there, you know, there's a degree of magic to that chemistry that you know, sometimes you just gotta be lucky too. And you guys, uh, most of it's before your tenure, CNN's had a tough time with prime time. Um, gone through a lot of different people. Um, what's your thinking about prime time for CNN? Well, I mean, listen, we're doing a lot better already uh, right now. Uh, uh, you know, we, we've had a much better year this year. In fairness, though, it's still not where we want it to be, and it's not as strong as we want it, want it to be. Um, uh, and it is the next area that we are going to focus on. Um, you know, we, we, we launched a new afternoon show with Jake Tapper that's gotten off to a very good start. Mm -hmm. We launched a new international hour at noon that's doing incredibly well. We, we launched a, a new morning show that five weeks in is also doing very well. We're, we've announced we're bringing back Crossfire uh, in September. And who are, who's going to be on Crossfire? So, so the hosts of, of Crossfire will be Newt Gingrich, right. uh, Essie Cup, Van Jones, and Stephanie Cutter. And I think if you think about the history of Crossfire, that's a very different, uh, that's a very different uh, face for Crossfire. So than, is than, Newt an employee of CNN? Uh, Newt is, an, uh, Newt is a, uh, uh, an employee of CNN. And uh, listen, I, I, I'm thrilled to have Newt there. Look, I think that... He's already, uh, he's already been a part of uh, a, a bunch of our programming. Newt is an incredibly uh, smart, intellectual thinker. Uh, I think, frankly, one of the criticisms of CNN that it didn't have enough conservative points of view on the air was mm -hmm. probably a valid criticism. And I think that you know, in Newt, uh, we immediately uh, have one of the most intellectual conservative thinkers in the world. And so I'm very proud of that. Uh, I think SC Cup is a fantastic addition for us as well. So, um, so, so th th those have been what we've done, and the next thing is we're gonna look at prime time on CNN and, and, and start to 
to think about where we go from, from here. We haven't had a regular 10 o'clock show uh, in a while. It's been a repeat of Anderson Cooper's 8 o'clock show. And so that's obviously something that we're going we're gonna to work on. Anderson has just had a, a tremendous uh, year. Uh, and as I said, it's one of the things where, you know, you talk about prime time. Anderson, uh, Anderson's been fantastic doing shows at 8 and live shows at 10. And, and um, it's a great thing to build off of. But isn't the, you know, the whole long tail of the news business just going to erode ratings f you know, forever or going forward? I mean, isn't that really the nature of the beast? I mean, you look at the Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, CNN's ratings are up quite dramatically this year. So um, you know, now, yes, we started off a low base. I was going to I was going to give you fair a low enough. base Okay, fair, fair enough. But the fact is, there, there, you know, that doesn't, there's no guarantees in the world, right? So there's nothing that said we had to go up, right? right that's true. So you know. Um, but we've gone up, and our ratings are up um, quite well this year. So, look, I think, it, I think this comes down to execution and doing a good job, and next we'll, we'll look at prime time. And I, I don't buy into the fact that there has to be a natural decline every year. I, I don't buy into that. On the other hand, as long as you're essential to enough people, then, then you're, you'll be successful. Do you ever see a day when the CPMs of digital and the CPMs of television are the same because they're not now. Well, no, 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 they're, they're not. Um, do I, when they're the same, look, I, I think that, uh, um, you know, who, who's to say, you know, who's to say what the world looks like in 10 years? Uh, and so I think anybody who makes that prediction, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a lot in it. Mm -hmm. um, do, I, do I think they'll be the same? Look, I wouldn't rule it out. Right. I wouldn't rule it out. Who knows where the world's going? Right, right. Going back to digital for a minute, Jeff, can you talk about your, um, is it a joint venture with BuzzFeed that you're doing on YouTube? We, what is we, that? Yep, so listen, uh, again, in, in, in saying that, that digital is, is really our, our, uh, one of our biggest priorities, uh, one of the things that, that we looked at was, uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of BuzzFeed. I think that they do a terrific job. Uh, I wanted to be associated with, with BuzzFeed. And, um, and so we, we have entered into a, uh, a joint venture uh, uh, for a YouTube channel. And um, we are uh, producing original content for that, mm -hmm. uh, the two organizations are. And frankly, that's just the start. There's a lot more that I want to do uh, and that I know that BuzzFeed also wants to do. And I think it does two things. One, it introduces uh, BuzzFeed's audience to, to CNN and obviously gives BuzzFeed the little, a little bit of credibility of CNN. And it introduces CNN to a whole new uh, audience that, you know, probably some of whom never heard of CNN. And that's good. And so I think that's why it works for both sides. Right. So, and we're going to do a lot more. I'm, I'm a huge, uh, huge fan of BuzzFeeds and, and think they've done a great job. Interesting. Um, I'd like to throw the floor open to uh, questions right now. Um, I think we've got one over here. You can ask about what's Wolf Blitzer really like. <laughs> so, yeah. Or maybe not. Can't laugh. But, yeah. uh, Dan Benton, Android Capital. Uh, Jeff, a couple of years ago, uh, you were at a different conference, and I believe you talked about the, uh, the challenge between uh, analog dollars and digital dimes. Um, I, don't I think it was pennies at the time. Well, you said <laughs> pennies, but maybe but, now it's not. Right, right, exactly. Okay, fair enough. Um, um, so where are we? And you're still getting very large checks from Comcast and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and Time Warner and totally. what have you. And how do you navigate this transition that we all know is coming? Yeah, well, look, I... I we're, we're much further along than pennies, and we're further along, I think, than dimes, and we're probably, you know, a little north of quarters, and, you know, uh, I, I don't know that there's 50 cent pieces, but, you know, there's somewhere between that. Um, so, you know, obviously we're making progress, and that's why I don't think you can say for sure where, where it's all going, but, but we're making progress. Now, you raised the, uh, an incredibly uh, important point about, uh, obviously, the bulk of, of uh, you know, what... Uh, of our revenue comes from uh, distributors like uh, Time Warner Cable and Comcast and DirecTV and et cetera. And I think the most important thing is for us to be essential enough to, to those distributors. And that's why I come back to being essential enough to, uh, to people who watch us. You know, people are going to learn about what happens in this world now from Twitter and Facebook, but they're going to come to CNN to see if it's true. Or they're going to come to CNN to see if it's what's really going on. And that's okay, and that's why, again, we have to be essential enough to those people. And that's why television will remain incredibly important to what we're doing. But we can't uh, ignore, you know, we can't ignore the numbers that, that came to us yesterday on the Royal Baby. 
So I think we have to balance both understanding where, you know, our bread is buttered for the time being, for sure. Okay. Question over here. Well, there's two, I'm sorry. You'll be next. Hi, Alan Pazoza from uh, Janus Capital, right here. Um, so with the inflation that we've seen from sports programming over the last five years, it's been a big driver of uh, increased bundling costs, <coughs> Excuse me. including also with uh, retrans. How do you go to the cable company and say, my ratings are up and I want another 10% when they have all this pressure from sports and, uh, and retrans? Well, I, I think, I think that you, there's a lot of issues in there. I think just, just with regard to CNN and, uh, and how do we get properly paid for what we're doing, I think, I think the key there is for, for us to be the best at what we're doing and to be the most essential news and information provider on any one of those uh, uh, outlets. And as long as we are essential enough to enough people uh, and providing the best news and information, then we should be paid properly for that. I understand pressures that they may have from other sources, but that, that's a separate issue from what we're providing. But you know, in a world where you know, ESPN is essential to a lot of people who want to watch you know, whatever games they're providing, CNN uh, needs to be, should be, and is essential enough to a lot of people who want to find out what's going on, uh, what's going on in, in Tahrir Square in Cairo or what's going on in Syria, or what's going on uh, at Buckingham Palace, or wherever it is. And we, we have to be good enough and strong enough so that we are essential. And, and as long as we are that, then I think we should be paid for it, regardless of, of the other pressures that they have. Some questions over here. Yeah, someone, All right. Hi, Nick Milani with uh, Herman Miller. I'd like to talk about objectivity and its impact on your business. It feels like over the last 20 years, the line between news and editorial has mm -hmm. blurred, and then maybe within the last five, the lines between editorial and even advertising have started to blur. Mm. What are your thoughts? How do you position yourself? Yeah. Uh, what is your strategy with that? Yeah, so look, we think about that a lot. Uh, obviously, in a world where, uh, you know, where our competitors uh, have made a lack of objectivity part of their strategy, which is fine, and I'm not, I'm not being critical of that at all. They, they've, they've done a very good job with that, that strategy. But what I do think that leaves, that actually does leave room for somebody to be objective. And, and you know, that's, that's, the, that's the path that we've chosen. But just because you say you're objective doesn't mean you need to be boring, okay? And I think that's the big mistake. People think that, you know, oh, it's more exciting to be partisan or, or you know, uh, but just because you're, you're being objective uh, does not give you a license to be dull. And so for us, the path is objectivity. And just because you're being objective doesn't mean you can't have points of view. Witness crossfire, okay? So um, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with those partisan channels and what they're doing. You know, there's, there's a great history of, of you know, uh, journalism both in the UK and in the United States that wasn't objective, and that's fine. But I do think there's an important place for an objective channel, and that's why I think we'll get paid for it, and that's why uh, I think there is a winning strategy. Just don't be dull. And I think that's where people confuse those two things. All right, we're going to have to leave it at that. Um, I'm sorry, maybe you can grab, grab Jeff outside. Um, and uh, anyway, I just, we really appreciate you coming. Thank you uh, for inviting by, me. And I, I hope you're better. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we'll be watching what happens uh, at CNN with great interest. Thank Thanks you very, very much. Thanks very much, Jeff.